Hi, my name is Nick Braun. Welcome back to another episode of Nick Knows. Today, we're going to talk about dynamical decoupling. Dynamical decoupling. Dynamical decoupling is a tool for reducing dephasing on qubits. Dephasing occurs on noisy current quantum computers that we have today. And to show you an example, we're going to start with the simplest case. Say I have a block sphere, which we're going to represent on this sphere, where we have 0 here, 1 here. And what we're going to do to the circuit is we're going to put it in a superposition. So it's going to be represented by this arrow right here. And what happens during dephasing is you start losing the coherent information between zeros and ones. So you can think of these things as having a drift to them, and in aggregate, you kind of like will build up a, a wedge like this. So what do you do about it? Well, we'll do something called a Han echo, which is essentially just an X gate. And what that will do is we'll flip this wedge over here into a new wedge on the other side of the block sphere. Then what happens is the same noise processes that caused the drift originally are going to cause the qubit to drift back. And so this is also called a refocusing pulse. Refocusing. Because we've flipped the qubit state, and the drift we had before is now refocusing the qubit back into the original one we had, and then we can always flip it back to get what we originally wanted. So in that effect, we've preserved the quantum state. OK, so why does this matter in general? Well, let's build a circuit. Let's say in this case we have a 4 qubit GHZ state. That looks like this. So I've got C naught here, C naught here, C naught here. Well, in order to actually implement this on a superconducting quantum computer, we need to do something called scheduling, which turns these gates into microwave pulses. Schedule. So what does this look like? Well, the single qubit pulses tend to not take very much time. The two qubit pulses are, in general, about 10 times longer. So long that I'm running out of room here. There we go. So what happens in this case, we have our top qubit here has a lot of idle time, where it's just sitting around not doing anything. And just like idle hands, idle qubits are a bad thing too. So what we want to do is occupy the qubit in a way by refocusing it in, in a similar way that will preserve the phase information. And so how do we do this? Well, we can import a simple method from the Qiskit research library, which you can do from And links to the method will be provided in the description from kiskitresearch.utils.convenience. Convenience. Import add dynamical decoupling. So there's a lot of pulse and timing information that goes into adding these dynamical decoupling pulses. And Qiskit makes it easy, and Qiskit Research makes it easier to add even more complicated pulse sequences. So what we can do is if we have this sequence we call a QC, we can build a new sequence we call QCDD, and it equals add dynamical, dynamical decoupling. And it requires some arguments. You're going to need the quantum circuit. You're going to need the back end, because for each back end, there's going to be different timing and pulse level information. And you're going to need the DD sequence you want. And for this, we'll use, say, XY4. Call this the DD string. And what XY4 does is it's just one example of a dynamical decoupling sequence. And it will add the gates and the timing information for this series x, y, x, y. And it's called x, y, 4 because there's four of them. And what these four gates do is they add up to the identity, but they keep the qubit occupied during its idle time. 
So they're spaced in the right way, the timing information is put in between them, and the qubit is thusly dephased. Now, there's also single qubit error that adds up on top of this, but that's uh, another issue. So it's varying amounts of DD sometimes are beneficial, sometimes they're worse for you. Now there's another flag that you can put in here, and it's because for some of these gates, they are not native basis gates of the uh, backends, and so some pulse information needs to be put in. Say, for example, we can build the Y pulses out of X pulses, which the backend knows how to do, and we can just do this simply by adding the flag add pulse cows equals true. We'll put in the pulse level information for this. So if we have, also for example, we call this XY4, we have different examples such as XY4PM, which are actually looking at the pulse level data, and they do the same kind of thing as XY4 does, except what they'll do is flip the actual amplitude of the pulses. So you'll have XY, but then you'll have X and Y. And there are various number of other sequences that you can put in using the Qiskit Research Repository. Today, we've learned how dynamical decoupling can decrease dephasing of your qubits when there's a lot of idle time, which is often the case in quantum algorithms. I've been your host, Nick Braun. Thanks for watching.